Scots. Yeah, you're the Scots show and then Danny's uh the player. Right podium, right podium. Left podium.
Good morning, church. It is a nice day out today. So, we have a special choir today, but they are um, coming in soon. Um, so, it is lovely because it's Palm Sunday, and I can't wait to uh, Easter. How about you guys? Anyways, um, God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a... Oh, sorry. Living one day at a time Accepting hardship as a pathway to peace. Taking, as Jesus did, this sinful world as it is. Not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right. If I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life, supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. Now... Can we all stand up to do the Apostles' Creed? I believe in the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, your Son and Son, my Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pilate's Pilate, was crucified, dead, and the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of the Father Almighty. From thence he is to God, and from the dead of death. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the everlasting. Amen. Um, Uh, can you please open your United Methodist hymn to page 280? Again, United Methodist hymn on page 
plants. So the flowers on the altar are given by Sister Celine and Brother Cecile Wilson in dedication of their loving union of 35 years and in honor of their birthdays. To God be the glory. The flowers on the altar can be placed by contacting Sister Sheila Griffin. Uh, Compassion Street is a musical production that will be presented at the Schwartz Theater on Friday, April 12th at 7.30 p.m. One of Workout's own, Brother Jamal Boyer, will be in this production. Information about tickets is on the hallway bulletin board. Uh, we are still looking for van drivers. If interested, in contact Pastor Joseph Archie III. Um, the men's day ties uh, color got changed to uh, gold. Um, again, um, if we haven't, um, if you guys haven't received uh, these, um, see uh, an usher, uh, and also it, the men's day is also uh, going to be on Sunday, April 7th, 2024, at 10 in the morning. Um, and I have, um, we also have an announcement by our sister Shawnee has an announcement. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so when as we're entering to Holy Week, remember that on Saturday, um, for the kids we're having an Easter egg hunt. It will be right in the front of the church. Um, so please invite grandkids, nephews, nieces, everyone, neighbors, and invite them um, to come to Waco. We're still accepting any egg or candy donations. Um, and if you do not want to go out to the stores, I am an avid shopper, so you can just give me the money and I will go shopping for you. I also would like to bring um, to the forefront a reminder about the ICUA of Delaware. My mom is giving me a sign that I forgot something, um, which is there will be a clothing drive during the egg hunt, egg hunt as well. So if you know anyone who is in need of clothes, um, please bring them out. Mom, am I good to move on? Okay. <laughs> um, the ICUA of Delaware Unit 3 have our annual Usher's Recognition Banquet, which is on Saturday, May 18th, 2024, from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. at the Modern Maturity Center. The cost is $50 for adults, and ages 3 to 12 is $25, and ages 1 to 3 is free. Um, so tickets are right here. You can see Brother Robinson, and also our patrons list will also be out with Brother Robinson in the North X. Amen. Our usher of the year is Sister Regina McLeod. All right, now do we have any announcements before we go to the pastor's announcements? No? Go once, twice, so. Good morning, church. The grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. I want to remind you of our service this afternoon uh, with the heroines of Jericho. That is a 3 o'clock p.m. service, and everyone is welcome to come and be a part of that worship service right here in uh, this space this afternoon. So please come out and join us for that service. This week we have Holy Week, and we have two weekly services. We've got a Holy Thursday service and a Good Friday service. I'm changing the time, so note this. We will meet at 6.30 p.m. on both nights. So 6.30 p.m. on Thursday, we have Holy Thursday service. It's a service of Holy Communion. We're remembering Jesus' 
having his last meal with his disciples before he was unjustly tried and then later crucified. And then on Good Friday at 6.30, we will have what's called a tenebrae service. It's a service of lights, and um, come out and experience that, especially if you haven't experienced that before. Very meaningful as we recall the steps that Jesus takes towards finally giving his life on the cross of, on the cross of Calvary for the sin of the world. So I want you uh, to be reminded and uh, bring a friend. Bring an enemy, bring anybody out so that they can also experience the love of God and understand the sacrifice that Christ made on our behalf. Amen? Thank you. All right, do we have any other announcements? No? All right. Be prepared for the children's choir. Now we have a selection with that. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Amen. This is new to us, so we're excited about our children coming in. Amen. All right. If you could stand on your feet and receive them.
have a scripture by uh, Brother Chance. Good morning, church. Today, I will be reading the, from the Message Bible, Matthew's chapter 21, verses 1 through 17. May I please stand? Thank you. It reads, when they neared Jerusalem, having arrived at Bethpage on Mount Olives, Jesus sent two disciples with these instructions. Go over to the village across from you. You will find a donkey tethered there with her coat with her. Untie her and bring them to me. If anyone asks what you're doing, say, the master needs them. He will send them with you. This is the full story of what was sketched earlier by the prophet. Tell Zion's daughter, look, your king is on his way, poised and ready, mounted on a donkey, on a colt, full, full of a packet animal. The disciples went and did exactly what Jesus told them to do. They led the donkey and the colt out, laid some of their clothes on them, and, and Jesus mounted. Nearly all of the people in the crowd threw their garments down on the road giving him a royal welcome. Others cut branches from trees and threw them down as a welcome mat. Crowds went ahead and crowds followed, all of them calling out, Hosanna to David's son. Blessed is he who comes in God's name. Hosanna in the highest heaven. As he made his entrance into J Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken, unnerved. People were asking, what's going on here? Who is this? The parade crowd answered, this is the prophet Jesus the one from Nazareth and Galilee. Jesus went straight to the temple and threw out everyone who had set up shop, buying and selling. He kicked over the tables of loan sharks and stalls of dove, dove merchants. He quoted this, My house was designated a house of prayer. You have made it a hangout for thieves. Now there was room for the blind and crippled to get in. They came to Jesus and he healed them. When the religious leaders saw the outrageous things he was doing, and heard all the children running and shouting through the temple, Hosanna to David's son. They were up in arms and took him to task. Do you hear what these children are saying? Jesus said. Yes, I heard them. And haven't you read in God's word? From the mouths of children and babies, I'll furnish a place of praise. Fed up, Jesus spun around the city left the, and left the city for Bethany, where he spent the night. May the Lord add a special blessing and message in the messenger. Amen. Amen. Now, we will have prayer by Brother Danny Fontanez. Amen, amen. God bless you, church. Amen, amen. If you guys can just join me in prayer by bowing down your heads. Amen. Lord, I give you thanks, Jesus. For everything that you have done, God, with my family, God. With my church family, God. I just want to give you thanks, God, for just placing me in this church, God, where I feel that I have a second family, God. Lord, I give you thanks, God, for just everything that you do, God. Lord, I give you thanks, God, for the pastor you have placed in this church that is leading us, God, um, on the path, God, to make it to you, Jesus. And Lord, I give you thanks, God, for everything that you do. So Lord, I just ask you, Jesus, that you just may continue, Lord, to just be with us. Be with each and every single one of us, God. Lord, I know that times may seem tough sometimes, God, but we know that you are always there next to us, Jesus. Lord, I just want to ask you, God, that you just may continue, Lord, to just guide us, God, each day. Each day, Jesus. So, Lord, I just ask you, Jesus, that we just may seek you each day, God. Lord, I know that times may seem tough, God, but I still want to seek you no matter what. Lord, I know that times may seem tough, God, but I still need you, Jesus. Lord, because nothing can replace the love that you give me. Nothing can replace, God, the peace that you give us. Nothing can replace the freedom that you give us, Jesus. So, Lord, I give you thanks, God, for just always being with us. Yes, God, yes, God, just dwell in this place, Lord. Just dwell in this place, Lord. I remember, God, that Hosanna, Hosanna to the God. 
Hosanna, Hosanna. Lord, you are worthy, Jesus, and you will always be praised, God. So, Lord, I give you thanks, Jesus. Lord, I give you thanks, Jesus. I may not any, have any other words, God, but I'm, all I can say is thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for everything. So, Lord, I just want to ask and declare all these things in your mighty name. And a church that is filled with Jesus says... Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest to the one who was and is and is to come. Jesus, Savior, Master, Redeemer, Friend, Lily of the Valley, Rose of Sharon, Lover of our souls. We thank you and praise you on this day for surely this is the day you have made, the day in which we shall rejoice and be glad in it. God, we promise that no rocks will have to cry out for us, for we will readily give you glory, readily give you honor, and give you praise. We are thankful, God, for this day, thankful for our dear sisters and brothers who are gathered together in faith, thankful for the little children who are singing and raising their voices unto you. Thankful for our youth who made a commitment to serve you, O oh God. Thankful, O oh God, that you have brought us here to this day and this hour to give you praise, to pray the prayers of the faithful, to hear your word read and proclaimed, O oh God. Even now, O oh God, let us continue to worship you as we give a portion unto you of what you have blessed us with for the building up of your kingdom in this part of Zion. We thank you for the opportunity to give. We thank you for the opportunity to bless the house of God. We thank you for the opportunity to be able to build the kingdom of God. And so pour out your Holy Spirit blessing on us, O oh God, so that all that we give, that we give from the heart. And we trust, O oh God, that it will be multiplied 30-fold, 60-fold, even 100-fold so that your name might be blessed, so that your people might be edified, so that your name might be glorified, and that your kingdom might come on earth as it is in heaven. All these things we pray in Jesus' precious name. And the church of God says, Amen. Amen. All right, give me some giving music.
introduction by our children's choir. Then after that, we will have the sermon by our wonderful Reverend Joseph Archie the Third.
you stand to your feet and bless the name of the Lord. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing to hear the voices of the children. What a blessing to hear the voices of our children. You know, we have a responsibility to share the faith of God with the next generation of Christians. I hope this is not a revelation to anyone, but tomorrow's not promised to any of us. And for those of us who have got a little more age on us, we're going to have to recognize that we're not always going to be here. And so we have a divine responsibility to train up the next generation so that they might know the word of God, so that they might live holy before the Lord, and that the church might continue to share that though the wages of sin be death, that the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. God, we thank you that the children were able to sing loud hosannas on this morning. God, we thank you that the youth were able to pray and lead worship and read scripture on this morning. And God, we thank you that those of us who are of age and mature are even able to give thanks for the youngest generations of Christians. We thank you, God, for all that has been said and done so far in this service of worship, and we pray now that you open our ears and our hearts and our minds so that we would hear what you would have to say through this, your servant preacher. I remember, oh God, that I too once said, hush, somebody's calling my name, calling me to preach and teach the word of God. And I remember even saying in my spirit, what shall I do? I said yes to your will. I said yes to your way. And so use me now, O oh God. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I don't know why it is, but coming up, one of the scripture lessons that I remembered most vividly was the scripture lesson that teaches us that Jesus goes into his father's house, overturns the tables of the money changers. The extortioners, the message of the Bible says, the extortioners turns over the seat of those who sold doves, animals for sacrifice, and exclaims to those who were there that God says that his house shall be called a house of prayer but they had made it a den of thieves. For those of you who've been in Bible study with me, you know I've said it many times before that this carpenter turned rabbi, this Galilean who believed and knew that he was the son of God, who gathered disciples from both near and far, 
who took fishermen and tax collectors and turned them into apostles, that this Jesus found that those who were not ready to hear his word, those who were not ready to live holy before the Lord, those who were not ready for the new thing that God was about to do, that this Jesus met his match with destiny when he started messing with the money. Oh, it's fine to go around and preach and teach in a new way. Oh, it's fine to gather disciples. It's, it's fine even that maybe the young people will spread palm branches before your way and welcome you into the city of Jerusalem as you ride on the back of the donkey symbolizing that you are a man of peace. Oh, it's fine that you might go around and the crowds might uh, be talking about you instead of talking about the the Pharisaic leaders, but once you go into the temple, once you start messing with the money, then we're going to have to come up with a plan to get rid of you. Zechariah 9 and verse 9, this is what it says. This is the fulfillment of prophecy. It says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem, see your king comes to you righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a coat, the foal of a donkey. He didn't ride in on a war horse. He didn't ride in claiming victory over the Romans, but rather he rode in on a lowly donkey symbolizing that he indeed was the man of peace, to bring about a true shalom, a peace where uh, the Bible would say a peace that passes all understanding, a true peace, uh, an area where we would be lacking nothing and that everyone would have their needs met, that kind of peace, not just the absence of conflict, but the existence of harmony amongst all the people. Here we find Jesus deliberately filling the prophecy, signaling to the people that he is the long-awaited Messiah, the King of Israel. But you know, the people's reaction to Jesus' entry reflects their expectations of the Messiah. You see, even as those who were learned rejected the Messiah, it were those who were young and those who were poor and the downtrodden and the, and the ones who had the world step on their neck. They recognized this Jesus as a man of peace. It wasn't the intellectuals, it wasn't the Pharisees, it wasn't the Sadducean priests, it was the common folk who recognized that this Jesus was a man for the people. It was the common folk that spread their cloaks and palm branches on the road, a sign of honor and the recognition of royalty. The common people shouted out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The common people shouted out, blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. The common people shouted out, Hosanna, in the highest heaven. Some of you might know that some of our learnedness might get in the way of following God. We get all caught up in men's ways of thinking, the traditions of men. We get all caught up in our own highfalutin philosophies and we forget that God's ways are far above our ways as far as the earth is from the heaven. The understanding of the Messiah was largely political and nationalistic for many in that day. For them, they anticipated a military leader who would overthrow Roman oppression. They anticipated one who would establish an earthly kingdom, yet this Jesus came with a very different purpose. He came to bring about much more than the restoration of the kingdom of Israel. He came to bring salvation and establish the kingdom of God, a spiritual realm, something that would be not just for Jews, but for Gentile alike. 
Like the crowd, we have often had our own expectations of who Jesus should be and what he should do for us. Some of us dare to tell God what God ought to be doing. There's some folk, you know them like that. Nobody in this room, but you know somebody like this. Ain't, ain't been nowhere, ain't done nothing, but they want to tell you how everything ought to run. Nobody like that in here. Go tell them what the preacher said, though. But Jesus challenges us to look beyond our immediate desires and embrace his greater purposes for our lives. Some of us are still so caught up in what we think ought to happen, what we think church should look like, what we think God ought to be doing in the world, that we're following our own will and not the will of God. Give me Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. This is a reminder. The Apostle Paul says to us about himself, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Some of us still don't want to give ourselves for anyone. If God so loved the world, let me ask you the question, church, who do you so love? If you really love the way God has called us to love, then it will be a sacrificial love. It means it's going to cost you something. It means it's not going to be superficial, it's not going to be easy, and it's not going to always be pleasant. For Jesus, his choice of transportation, a donkey, was significant. In contrast to the grandeur and power associated with earthly kings, Jesus presents himself as a humble and gentle king. Jesus embodies humility. Jesus demonstrates that his kingdom is not of this world. So much of us, so so many of us are so caught up in this world that we cannot understand that the God whom we serve is calling his kingdom to penetrate and overpower this way of doing things. The Bible calls Satan the God of this world. And yet, what you have always is a kingdom of God trying to and fighting against penetrating the kingdom of darkness. It not only but it happens in our own souls. Who amongst you during this Lenten season has searched your own heart to see if you are of the Lord? Have you asked the Lord to try you and know your thoughts? Have you asked the Lord to remove anything from you that was unlike him? So many of us want to point the finger at others and you say, I'm so glad that the preacher is talking about those others. I hope that they might get their life right. I hope that they might walk the straight and narrow path rather than the wide road that leads to destruction. So many of us want to think about how God might turn around somebody else. But I came here to ask you this morning, how have you asked the Lord to turn you around? Think about the humility of Jesus. The humility of Jesus stands in stark contrast to the pride and arrogance often displayed by earthly rulers. Jesus teaches us that true greatness lies in service and humility, not in power and authority. I'll say it again. True greatness lies in service and humility, not in power and authority. There are so many of us who are reaching and grasping for power, reaching and grasping for authority. We think that only if we would bear such titles, only if we were given such responsibility, only if we were over other people, then we would find our calling in life. But I came here to tell you this morning, church, that you might find your true greatness in service and humility. As we reflect on the triumphal entry of Jesus, we must examine our own expectations of Jesus. We must ask ourselves, are we seeking Jesus merely for personal gain and temporal blessing? We must ask ourselves, are we recognizing him as the Savior who came to redeem us from sin and reconcile us to God? If we look at our own dusty, dirty lives, if we look at the way we treat people, the way we talk to others, if we look at the way we have left the things undone that God has has told us to do, if we look at all those things, then we will 
Lord, here I am, a sinner in need of your grace. God, you've got to do something in me because, God, I don't want to be this kind of person anymore. I hope I'm preaching to somebody. Like the crowds in Jerusalem, we may have preconceived notions of who Jesus is and what he should do for us. Some of us, even when we pray, we never listen to God. I shared with the, the confirmation uh, students just this morning that prayer is not just about bringing our petitions unto God, not just about asking God to do things for us. It's also about being quiet before the Lord and allowing the Lord to speak to us. What is God speaking to you? What is God asking you to do? How is God calling you to change? Even if God is calling you to do the hard thing. To reconcile that relationship that has been uh, un, seemingly unreconcilable for a long time. Will you be the one to take the first step? Will you be the one to offer the hand of peace? Remember, the Bible teaches us that Jesus is the reconciler and we as his disciples are called to be ministers of reconciliation. If there is any peace, it should start with us. If there is any joy, it should start with us. If there is any love to be spread in the world, it should be spread by the ones who claim to follow Jesus. How do we respond to Jesus as our king? Like the crowd, we're called to offer him our praise and adoration. So many of us find it not robbery to lift up holy hands unto the Lord and say, thank you, Jesus, and thank you, Lord. We find it not robbery to be able to say, Lord, if it had not been for you on my side, I don't know where I would be. But our worship must extend beyond mere words. Our worship the worship of God that we proclaim must be reflected in both our actions and actions. As we reflect on the events of Palm Sunday, we are confronted with a profound truth. Jesus is not just a king to be admired from afar, but rather Jesus is a savior who invites us into personal relationship with him. You see, when you're in personal relationship with someone, it's not just about niceties and formalities anymore. It's about opening yourself up and saying, I've got some problems, I've got some challenges, I've got some fears, I've got some difficulties, I've got some tribulations, and I've got some distresses, and I've got some sin. And God is still working on me. How many of you know what it means to have a personal relationship? I think back even to married marital relationships and close friend relationships. If you really are uh, in a personal relationship, you go past the niceties and the formalities. You open up and you become vulnerable to one another. And the things that you might not share with anyone else, you're able to share with one another. That's what it means to have a personal relationship. Now, I'm here to tell you this morning that you can tell Jesus things that nobody else knows. And this Jesus, this lover of our souls, this Jesus, this great physician, this great healer that we have is able to heal even the most broken of hearts is able to heal even the most strained of relationships, is able to stand in the gap even when you have no idea what you're going to say or what you're going to do. Know that the Holy Spirit will give you utterance and use your lips and your mouth and you'll stand back and say, was well, that really me who said that? As we reflect on the events of Palm Sunday, we must understand that we cannot just be admirers of Jesus. There were those in the day that Jesus marched Jerusalem. They were the ones, uh, many of them, who were waving palm fronds and, and shouting loud hosannas and saying, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But some of those same ones in those crowds who were saying, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, were the same ones that a couple of days later who were crying out, crucify him. How many of you know that some folks who claim to be your friends on Wednesday are not your friends on Friday? Y'all know I'm telling the truth.
Some of the ones who want to be friends with you now are friends as long as things are going well, as long as you keep the party going, as long as you, you got a little money in your pocket, as long as you're able to help them out every once in a while. Oh, but let you be down on your luck. Let your money be a little funny. Reach out to them and they won't answer the phone. I don't get too many amens when I preach like that. We must understand that this same Jesus that we love and serve calls us to lay down our fears and our doubts and even our own aspirations at his feet and surrender our lives to his lordship. So many of us want to claim Jesus as savior. That means that we want to be able to have our sin forgiven. We want to be able to have a place over in glory. We want to have right relationship with God. We want to be justified with God. So many of us will claim Jesus as savior, but I came to ask you this, will you claim him as Lord? If you claim him as Lord, you say, not my will, but what? Thy will be done. <laughs> Surrendering to Jesus requires humility and trust and obedience. It doesn't mean anything to say you will follow the Lord if you don't actually follow through and follow the Lord. Give me Matthew chapter 23. This is what it says. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. This is what we call this upside-down kingdom of God. Where those who humble themselves will be exalted and those who humble themselves will be exalted. And the greatest in the kingdom of God are not those that sit on thrones and give orders, but those who serve the most. It means relinquishing control and allowing the will of God to prevail in our lives. Just as the crowd laid their cloaks before Jesus, we have to offer him the entirety of our being. What does it mean to offer God all of our hearts, all of our minds, all of our soul, and all of our strength? The entirety of our being. All of our hopes, our dreams, our struggles, confident that God will lead us on the path to abundant life. Some of us find that we're really not happy in life. We find no happiness in life, not because we don't have material things, not even because we don't have a loving relationship with family. But some of us have a God-shaped hole in our heart that needs to be filled only by God. You'll never be right. You'll never be truly happy. You'll never have full joy until you accept Jesus to the pardoning of your sin and you say Lord here I am a sinner in need of your grace grace is the unmerited favor of God the unearned favor of God you cannot earn the grace of God it is a free gift all you have to do is accept it and believe that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead the good news is we can look back 2,000 plus years later. We can look back at, at what happens in our Good Friday services and our Holy Thursday services. And we know the end of the story. We know that he didn't stay in the grave. We know that he didn't stay under, uh, under the ground. We know that God raised him with all power. I'm here to claim to you this morning that if God can raise his son Jesus Christ from the dead, what makes you think God can't? handle your problem? What makes you think God can't handle your issue? What makes you think God can't handle your circumstances? Look at the humility of Jesus. It was because he humbled himself even to the point of death. Give me Philippians chapter 2 verse 8. This is what it says. It says, and being found in appearance as a man, talking about Jesus, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of what? death, even the death of the cross. The Lord of glory. The one who was with God in the beginning. The Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The one who was and is and is to come laid down his own life because he loved humanity so. He loves you. He loves me. He wants to restore us into the, the rightful image of God. 
We were created in God's image. It was sin that marred that image. It was sin that damaged that relationship. It was sin that caused us to be separated from God. But it is the cross that brings us back into right relationship with God. It is the cross, that emblem of suffering and shame, that brings us back to a position where we might be one with God, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at the heavenly banquet. Is there anybody here this morning looking forward to the heavenly banquet. For the only ones who will be at the banquet are, will be the ones who say yes to God's will and yes to God's way. As we journey, my sisters and brothers, through Holy Week, let us walk alongside Jesus. Let us follow Jesus in obedience and humility. Let us surrender our lives to God, allowing him to reign supreme in every area of our life. Once we have done that, then we can run on. Then we can lift back our head and, and lift up our shoulders knowing that we are a child of the Most High God and nothing in this world will be able to stop us from doing what God has called us to do. How many of you know if God has foreordained it, there is nothing that a man or a woman or an institution can do about it? But we have to share the good news as well. The good news of the kingdom of God. The good news with all those around us inviting them so that they might join with us in proclaiming also Hosanna in the highest. The triumphal entry invites us to acknowledge Jesus Christ as our king and our savior. He comes not as a conquering hero but as a humble servant. He comes offering salvation to all who would believe, but we must welcome him into our hearts and lives. We must submit ourselves to his lordship. We must embrace his kingdom values, values of love and humility and service, and we must echo the words of the crowd shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So be it. Amen. Shouts of loud Hosanna. An opportunity to recognize the King of glory. We have an opportunity every single day to say yes again to the Lord. That also means you can say no to God. You will break the heart of God when you say no. I won't follow you. I won't accept your son, Jesus Christ. I won't allow your Holy Spirit to lead me in holiness. You'll break the heart of God. But we have something called free will. That means that you get to choose. But as Joshua said, he said, as for me and my house, who will serve the Lord? How about you and your house? Will you serve the Lord? Will you say, Lord, today is the day of salvation? Years ago, some of the old saints, when you would ask them a question like, are you saved? And they would say, I'm saved, and yet God is still saving me. I remember Maya Angelou, when folks would say, I'm saved, she would say, already? <laughs> We're thankful to God. Thankful for his will and his way in our lives. Thankful for our sisters and brothers in the faith. Thankful for children who can sing out loud hosannas. I don't want you to take for granted this assembly. The Bible says, forsake not the assembling of ourselves as the manner of some is, but come together all the more as we see the day of the Lord approaching. When you look out into this sin-sick world, you see all kinds of craziness and foolishness, all kinds of sin and devastation. You see war and rumors of war. You see all kinds of nastiness, political gains, wasting of resources, genocide. The Lord is not pleased. But in this dark world, the church is called to be the light. In this world of injustice, the church is called to stand up for what is right and what is just. Until, as Amos the prophet says, righteousness flows 
like an ever-flowing stream. Pray with me now over these palms. Let these palms be a reminder that we're saved by the one who rode into Jerusalem on a lowly donkey, claiming his rightful place as the son of David and the king of Israel. Let us pray. God, pour out your Holy Spirit blessing upon these palm branches. Allow these palms to help us to be reminded that even as loud hosannas were sung 2,000 years ago, that the Lord is still worthy to be praised that we can sing even louder hosannas in this day and age. Let it be a reminder that even those who often sang his praises just a few days later cried out, crucify him. Let, it be, let these palms be a reminder of the love that God has for us, the love we're called to have for God in return, and the love we're called to have for one another and this sin-sick world. Bless these palms, O oh God. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. There might be somebody who doesn't know the Lord. Maybe you're ready to make a decision today to say, Lord, I'm all yours. If you're ready, God is ready to receive you. Ready to make a decision? Come on down, offer this preacher your hand and offer the Lord your heart. Is there one? Is there somebody joining us online? Put your contact information in the chat so we can reach you. I want to be able to reach you, pray with you, encourage you, challenge you to walk this Christian race, and remind you that you have others who will help you along the way. Anybody want to come and give a make a decision for Christ? Maybe then somebody wants to come on back to God. Maybe you used to love the Lord. Used to love church, the assembly, the fellowship, the prayers, the communion, the hymns, the preaching, the scripture. But somehow you've allowed the, the cares of the world to get in the way of your relationship with God. Found yourself drifting further and further away from the Lord. Good news is you can come on back. If you're ready to come on back, the Lord is waiting with open arms to receive you. If I'm talking about you, come on down, let me pray with you this morning. Is there one? Maybe then there's somebody who wants to join the church. If you're looking for a good church, I've got good news for you. You found one. It's called Watcote United Methodist Church in Dover, Delaware. You ready to join the church? Come on down. Let me pray with you. And we'll gladly receive you. Is there one? Finally, the call is the call to prayer. The word teaches us that we should pray without ceasing. So I'm inviting you to come on down and pray for your family, for your friends, for your neighbors, for your enemies, for your classmates, for your cousins. Some of y'all got cousins like I got cousins who, we'll talk about that in another sermon. Will you come on down and pray for them? You know somebody who doesn't know Jesus. Come pray that the Holy Spirit might move on their hearts and they might say yes. Most of them are in the body. Come on down and pray for them. Some of, some of you might want to come and pray for the pastor. That I might never be tempted to stray from preaching the truth of the gospel. Some of you might want to come pray for Whitecoat United Methodist Church. Some of y'all believe like the pastor believes that God is not done with this church yet. And what you see now is just a shadow of what you're going to see in the days to come. You want to come down and pray? You know.
that the Lord wants to use you greatly, but you've not quite said yes fully to God. Pray that God will allow you to say a hearty and full yes. God, pour out your Holy Spirit on those who are gathered here for prayer. We know that prayer changes things. We know that your word says the effective, fervent prayer of righteous people availeth much. Lord, we thank you this morning for the children who sang loud hosannas. We thank you, Lord, for prayer warriors who are standing in the gap, O oh God. We thank you, God, for those who are hanging tight on to the cross of Calvary, O oh God. We thank you for those who are shut in and sick members of our church. Pour out your Holy Spirit on them. Let them know that even though we're separated from space, that no, no way, no, no how can they be separated from your Holy Spirit. Do a good work in us, O oh God, so that men and women and boys and girls might see us and say, Lord, what must I do to be saved? May they look at our example. May they look at our humility. May they look at us and say, I want to also be a servant of the Most High God. God, we thank you for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you will do. God, we need you like never before so that we might go out and, and share with this sin-sick world the ways of God in a world that has gone morally rotten. God, we need you. We thank you and we praise you. And we pray now the prayer that you taught your disciples when they said, Lord, teach us to pray. You taught them to pray in this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I want you to rise and go in peace. I want you to remember that we should shout loud hosannas every single day of our lives. Hug somebody and tell them you love them. Hug somebody and tell them you love them. First come, first serve. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you, Sister Lee Robinson. Thank you. All right, I'm told that the tradition here is you get uh, palm fronds on the way out the door, and so we'll ask our ushers to be prepared to hand them out as you leave out. Again, a reminder of the 
loud hosannas that were shouted as Jesus had his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Yes. Line. I'm told that we're going to pass them out now so you can sing Hosanna while you're waving the palm fronds. <laughs> okay, so be it. Salvation. 